Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through images in HTML. We know that adding images to a web page makes it look much better. In this video, we'll go through the syntax and the attributes of image tag present in HTML. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates on programming videos. So without any further delay, let's get started. We have been through the image tag previously. If you guys remember when we came across empty elements in HTML, there we saw the syntax for image tag in HTML. Actually, the image tag falls under the category of empty elements in HTML. That's why we saw it there as well. It means that this particular tag in HTML does not require any closing tag to work. It has attributes. We'll go through them in a moment. Before that, let me clear this one thing to you guys. Any image we see on a web page is not inserted into that page. Instead, it is linked to a web page. What the image tag does, it holds a space for the referenced image. You will understand it much better in a while. So let's go through the syntax of adding an image or attaching an image we can say to a web page. Using the image tag is not at all a task for the user. It's the easiest thing to do in HTML. We can say that. So what we'll do is we'll write here inside the body tag. What we are going to do is we are going to write here IMG. So this is the tag and we already know that this is an empty element. So it does not require any closing tag. Now. Inside the image tag, we have to add attributes. So we'll write here SRC. So let's discuss some important things before we move ahead. You can see over here that we have used the SRC attribute inside the image tag. This is a necessary attribute while using the image tag in HTML. Why so? This attribute specifies the path to the image. Any image we want to attach to our web page needs to be stored somewhere either in the system or it can be anywhere on the internet as well. So let's move back to the main folder. So what we are going to do is we are going to move back to our main HTML folder. So here we are inside the HTML folder. Now what we are going to do is we are going to make large icons over here. So here we are in the HTML folder. You can see we have all the HTML files over here, right? Here we have an image named Python. So if we double click on it, you can see this is an image and the name of this image is Python, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to click on it, right click basically, go to properties. And here you can see we have the name of a file and then we have the type. Type here is PNG. PNG means portable network graphics. It is basically an extension for images and pictures. So HTML do support other extensions like JPEG. GIF, SVG and many more other extensions. So we can use any of those files with those extensions. Now to attach this image to a web page, we need to provide the path to the system through which the system can understand that this particular image is stored in this part of the system or the drive. Fine. So the path you can check here is at the top of this window. Click on it and you can see the path over here. So this is the path. So this Python file is present inside the C drive users. Then we have a name, this folder name as Kaushal Bish. Then we have desktop and HTML. Fine. So this is the path of a image. Let's move back to VS Code and we don't need the whole path as of now because the current HTML file we are in right now is present inside the HTML folder. So we don't need to specify the whole path as of now. All we have to do is we have to write the file name here inside the SRC attribute. What we'll do is we'll write here the file name. So a file name is python.png. Fine. So this is a file name. Save the program and you can see we have an image over here on the browser. The size is quite large as of now. We'll see how to manage this thing after some time. For now, let's reduce the size of the whole web page. What we are going to do is we are going to reduce the size and you can see the whole image over here. Fine. Another possibility is we can store all the images inside a single folder. 
So here, if we go back to our HTML folder, here you can see we have a folder named images, right? Double click on it and you can see we have different images present over here. We have three different images basically HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We can use any of these images. So let's get back to VS Code again. And the next thing we are going to do is we are going to access any image from that particular folder. Fine. So what we are going to do is we are going to write here after this IMG then SRC. Now inside SRC we have to write the folder name first. Fine. So we'll write here images then we'll use slash and then we'll write the file name. So we have three different files over here. This is the benefit of using VS Code. We have all the three files we can use over here. So let's use CSS.png as of now. Close the image tag, save the program and you can see the image over here. So let's do one thing. We are going to use the BR tag. Use it now. Save the program and let's use it once again so that it will be easy for us to understand. So here we have two different images, the Python one and the CSS one. So basically what we have to do is we have to give the correct path of that particular image. Fine. So the next attribute we'll discuss is the alt attribute or we can say the alternate attribute. Let's write it over here first. What we are going to do is we are going to write here alt, press enter and write something over here. Let's say we are writing over here CSS. So this alt attribute we have here provides an alternate text for an image. If the user for some reason cannot view it, so basically it can happen because of slow connection and error in the source code or in the source we can say or if the user is using a screen reader. So it can be any of these reasons but the, if the user is not able to see that picture then an alternate text will come at place fine. So the value of the alt attribute should always describe the image. So that's why we have written over here CSS so that the user can understand that this particular image over here is a CSS image or it can be basically anything that describes the image. Fine. So let's do one thing here. What we'll do is we'll make an error over here in the SRC attribute. Let's change the file name over here. Let's say this is the file name. That's a simple error, right? Nothing major over here. Let's save the program and you can see the image is not here anymore. Fine. So I believe you guys might not be able to see because I have to increase the size for that. So you can see here now there is no image present at this particular part of our web page because the source is wrong. So the file name is wrong basically. Instead of that we have text present over here which says CSS. Fine. So this is how the alt attribute works in the image tag. Further and talking about the actual size of these images over here. We can change the size of these images in two different ways. So let's start with the easier one first. What we'll do is we'll use the height and the width attribute just like the source and alternate attributes we have. These attributes are also used within the image tag. All we have to do is we have to write here Height. height is let's say 250 pixels and then we have width as well. So width again is let's say 250 pixels. Save the program and you can see the image height and width is now 250 pixels. We can do the same thing for this file as well. So what we'll do is we'll write here width as let's say 100 pixels and height as again 100 pixels. Save the program. And you can see the size of this image is 100 pixels in width and height now. Fine. Another way of using these attributes is to use them within the style tag. We can use this tag anywhere in the program. Although this tag is related to CSS and we can also define these things in CSS files. But as of now, we are not talking about that concept. So we'll stick to HTML only. So what we'll do is we'll write here to use the style tag what we have to do is we have to write here style now what we want to do is we want to access the image tag so we have to write here img curly braces now we have to define the properties inside here fine so what we'll do is we'll define the width over here as 500 pixels and the height as well fine height is again going to be 500 pixels now one thing to notice here is this image tag or these properties will be applied on both the tags because we are using tag over here fine. So we are changing the properties of a tag 
So both the image tag will be affected. Save the program and you can see the image size are now changed. Both are 500 pixels. So let's do one thing. Let's remove it from here and this as well. Now change the size to let's say 200 pixels and 200 pixels. Save the program and you can see we have both the images over here. Both are 200 pixels in width and height. So this tag is also working fine. What we summarize from this is we can use these attributes within the image tag itself or we can use the style tag to change the style of the image. So these are some of the basic attributes we can use within the image tag in HTML. I hope you guys got it. Try it by yourself and let us know if you face any problem. That's all for this video guys. See you in the next one where we'll go through tables in HTML. If you enjoyed watching this video, then do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to help you. Please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Simply code. Thank you.